and we're going to talk to our man Teddy Kigstat like we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. And folks, if you haven't checked out Teddy's outstanding weekly Tiger Forex report, it comes out every Monday with new issues, updates throughout the week when warranted. You also get a subscriber webinar included in there that Teddy did recently as well. You can check that out right under the newsletter tab at TFNN. You subscribe. It's $97. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can't go wrong there. And he's also got a couple of great webinars under the services tab, Japanese Candlestick Pattern Stock and Option Strategies with Teddy. That's $97 as well. And if you're into options at all, this one was a great one, man. A little bit of a complex strategy, but he broke it down so well. Capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads with Teddy. That one over there on the services tab as well. So check those out. And Teddy Kingstead, good morning. What's happening, man? Good morning, Tommy. We have some nice moves to talk about in the bonds and the 10 year crude dollar index. Where do you want to start? I love it. Um, yeah, where do you want to start, I guess? We got the, the ADP number today, so we've had the yields, I guess. Let's talk a little bit of yields because we've had a little bit of a pullback. We were just at a 4.6 handle on the 10 year. Um, we're approaching 4.3% just that quickly. And of course, that's driving some of the action as we're a week away from this Fed meeting. But you know, you start going out, the market's shifting. And on the heels of that private payroll number, given a little bit of fuel potentially that maybe we get as the market, you know, it moves so quickly these days on, on what it thinks is going to happen. But maybe we get a cut or two through the um, end of the year. So maybe starting, you know, with the with that, with the yields, with the Fed, with with some of that jobs data ahead of Friday. Sure. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, this is just the same bad movie that we've seen so many times before. This is all reaction off of really minute news. Um, it's sensationalizing things. You know, when the market's in a range trade and it's not moving very much, it doesn't take much of a move to look like a gigantic move, you know. So um, the bond market and the 10-year market bottomed out last uh, Thursday, and we had that, um, you know, initial jobless claims last week, which was only 1,000 higher than the week prior. Uh, that's not a big jump in jobless claim. We want higher unemployment because if you want rate cuts, that's what the Fed wants. They want to see a lot of people out of work before they start cutting rates. So that number was not that big of a juicy number, but that's what stopped the, the, the falling bond market. Okay. Then you had the number that came out yesterday. That's the one that I think people really, really, really are taking it into too much, giving it way too much value. So, and that would be the, uh, let me see, let me pull this up, the actual number that came out yesterday. So we had, uh, let's see, the, what do you call it? The jolts job openings. Okay. Yeah. So now that's kind of an answer. It's like a reverse employment number. So now yeah. that number, although the job openings is decreasing, which means less opportunity, which is, goes along with higher unemployment. Um, that is not that big of a number, okay? Um, the reality is is that the market is still very, very strong when it comes to jobs. You know, like yeah. we're coming off the pandemic and, you know, the, the media is sensationalizing everything because they want the Fed to cut because they've been calling for a rate cut for a year now and it hasn't happened. You know, well, the reality is inflation isn't going away. You know, crude oil has been breaking for a month and five Finally, finally, in the past couple of days, you're finally starting to see a downtick in oil prices. And you're talking about like 10 cents when it should be like every bit of 75, 80 cents lower with the move that we've had in oil over the last month. And it's okay. taking away the refined, the sweet refining, switching, blah, 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 which now they're pushing, saying, oh, we're done with the switch for the refining. And so that should lower prices at the pump. Get out of here. You know, that's that's it's, if that was happening, you would see it already. And it is not happening. You know, so these things are going to keep and inflation high. I don't know about you. This prices at the, at the grocery store are not going down. Okay. So if the prices in the grocery store aren't going down and the, and the, and the pr price of gas isn't going down, how is inflation going down? That makes no sense. You know, so I, I would say that, you know, this is a short term number and short lived. I would watch the jobless claims that come out tomorrow. Now, if jobless claims come out like significantly higher than expected, you know, I mean, then I mean significantly, you know, then we might start to see a trend that you can actually jump on short term and see, let's see how this goes over the next couple of months if it continues to trend that way and see how the unemployment number comes out on Friday as well. You know, if all of a sudden there is a sharp jump in unemployment, well, then that would give a little fuel to the narrative of a, of a rate cut coming. But if you think one's coming anytime soon this year, I think that's preposterous. The only thing that would happen, you would have to see corn, wheat, all the raw commodities just tank. I mean, tank. You, you're going to, I mean, literally, you're going to have to see that happen to have food prices drop 
to a point where right now the margins, you know, there's an expectation. People are used to paying higher prices. I mean, let's get it. Let's be real. Restaurants are gouging people now. You know, I mean, we keep it with the prices that they have. Those prices aren't coming down. I mean, you when you no. te- when you tell me that you can go to, um, let's say, Capital Grill Steakhouse, and all of a sudden they're going to start lowering their prices, then I'll tell you inflation's going away. Okay, <laughs> but none of these places. Well, but seriously, if they're not doing yeah, it, no, that's the, little, not the lower guy's not doing it. So that means it's not going away. You can put the narrative all you want, but the markets aren't stupid. You know, I mean, exactly. <laughs> they don't believe the news. So I think that you'd be, have to be careful when it looks to like like the bonds right now in the ten year. This rally is nice. You made a higher move high over the last couple of sessions, but this is just a corrective move. We're in a wide range trade, so we're going back to the median. You know, until there's an actual action. I'd be careful getting caught up in it. You know, now this is also fueling the rally in the euro US dollar and the pound US dollar right now. But like I said, these are not big breakouts. You know, like there's no reason for anyone to lock into these trends. So I would use cautious with caution with that and beware of the follow through. You know, I'm not telling you to fade it, but watch those numbers. If unemployment comes out like lower on Friday, that's going to be complete contrast in terms to these other two numbers. You can see the spike in the 10-year and the bonds. Like If unemployment comes out unexpectedly lower, you'll probably see a spike high and see a, a dollar and a, ha- a handle and a half move in both the 10-year and the 30-year. You know What would that do to the euro, US dollar, and the pound? You see them down like every bit of half a buck to a buck. You know, yeah. taking reversing the trend. You know, so I would be careful. You know, not that I'm always a bear because I'm a floor guy, but this is the kind of situation when you smell a bear trap coming. You know, and I would just, you know, especially when the when the media narratives get starts to get they start fanning it, that fuel, you know, and that fire. That's when I start thinking, hmm. Well, either they're right or they're wrong, and what's the what? Not most of the time, they're wrong. <laughs> so. It is interesting. I had the euro, U.S. dollar up as well as many charts when you were talking there, and I appreciate the breakdown. Um, and just going back to where we were April 9th, pretty much, you know, just kind of the highs before you fell off. We had a high there of one oh eight eighty four. We're at one oh eight eighty five right now, and in the span of three days, we were down at one oh six fifty. Um, right. So maybe you know, just to show, like you're talking about, man, great points, as and we've chopped back up to that level. But you see how quickly, even from that level, we gave it up at the beginning of April, back down to almost mm-hmm. 106. And, and right. yeah, so we'll see what happens. Well, and here's a number stuff. for you. You're talking about the euro US dollar right now. The Tiger Forex Report customers know that I've had the monthly directional pivot level in, in there for the past like six months. Okay. And the euro has been treading around that with no more than a couple bucks for the last four months for sure you know and it it's yeah. always seems to be the median that it keeps gravitating back to so right now 108.34 is your target level you know at least for nice. a pullback so can you hang with us for the break we'll talk a little sure. bit of crude finish it up perfect Absolutely. stay tuned folks come back with our man teddy we'll talk a little bit of crude we'll finish up the conversation stay tuned we'll be right back Welcome back, folks. We give the S&Ps up about 15 points. We give back some of those gains as we open, but we're trading right now at 53.18. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad, and let's jump into crude. You referenced it a little bit, Teddy. What do you think of the action in crude right now? Pretty interesting. We had some OPEC news this week, um, but a little bit of a pullback from, from those highs that we've had recently with crude struggling a bit. What do you think? Uh, well, I definitely like the slide. That's for sure. Um, the pullback was nice. The, uh, the the break that we had on Monday was significant because we made not just a lower low, um, but on a long term channel for the trend, it definitely is is testing some critical support. That being said, we had an area that um, on Monday bottomed out in our critical support band, which is in the Tiger Forex report. Yesterday, we settled below it. Today, we're trading right below that area. So I would watch the 73.50 to 75 even area. If, if you get above 75 even and can sustain a trade, I think you're going to start to find a base. Like if you look at the crude chart going back to um, between the end of or middle or end of April into the middle of May, you, you had a real wide where the, the body of trading was between like 79.80 and 78 dollars and it just kind of poked a little bit above and below that i think we're going to probably be heading into another period like that um am i looking for a big rally no am i looking for a much more to downside not really i think you're probably going to see us settle into a trade over because you got to remember we have fourth of july coming up blah 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 what have you you know um we'll see how the travel patterns are with people you know one of the things i've heard um on one of the stations the other day was that um, it looks like people are planning on traveling this year. The only thing is what they're doing is they're going the debt to do it. 
that's not a good sign. You know, so I think yeah. it's going to be a question of is how many people are really going to make that decision and what's their expectations for the rest of the year. Some people may rein back their travel plans. You know, people may go back to more of a COVID staycation kind of um, platform this year. We'll see. You know, so I, that I can't I can't tell you where it's going to go, but I think you're finding good support where it's at. I don't think there's much more to the downside. I mean, we, I wish oil would be go down to 65 60 dollars a barrel um but then i'm looking for hoping and wishing and praying and anytime that thought yeah. comes into my head you know where i stand hey we only got 10 seconds i got a question in the den what about yeah. natural gas man where are you in natural gas 266 Nat gas. Right now. um i i like that i think that it's starting to come into a support area i don't think there's much room to the downside i love it man that was perfect teddy so and i actually was looking at that earlier <laughs> i love it it was a quick perfect 10 